Thor, the Giant's Fool. Thor cannot fly, nor can his hammer. No spectators of myth. The Thor of old requires his chariot and his two legendary magical goats, Tangrisnir and Tanganyosta. Yet the chariot's reins are tied to these poor creatures' horns, and whatever direction Thor yanks them in, so must Tangrisnir and Tanganyosta fly. And while they did serve him, they were also served to him on a plate, sometimes daily. You see, these majestic animals were also a source of food for the God of Thunder. Legend has it that Thor would regularly butcher both of his goats. He'd skin them and cook them and then feast upon their meat. Yet, he'd keep the unbroken bones and pelts of his pets. This part, spectators of myth, is key. Because the next day, he would place their bones upon their pelts and use the magic of Mjolnir to bring them back to life. Only for the ritualistic butchering to happen all over again whenever he was hungry. Magical flight to butchered meat. Back to life and repeat. That was the life of Tangrisnir and Tanganyosta, the pets of Thor. That is, until one fateful night, when the God of Thunder happened upon an unwitting family. They traveled far over land and sea, until they happened upon a dense forest, and what happened to be some shelter for the night. Yet, they were woken by some bellow and bluster. The entire place shook. Thor gripped Mjolnir and checked outside. The noise came not from the land or the weather, but a snoring giant, and their lodging was actually his glove. The God of Thunder then realized that he wasn't in Midgard anymore. No spectators of myth. This was Jotunheim, the land of the giants. The giant turned to Thor and company and laughed. He asked if he could join them on their journey. Thor agreed, thinking, what harm could he do? The giant even kindly carried their food inside his massive sack. So, all made their way through the forest, and soon were at rest again. While sleeping, Thor was awoken yet again by the giant's loud snoring. Time to deal with this boorish oaf, thought the God of Thunder. So Thor decided to paint the land with the giant's brains. He raised Mjolnir and struck him in the head, but this clobbering did no damage. It but woke the giant, who thought a falling acorn had tapped him. Enraged, Thor tried again and thundered the hammer down, but for a second time, Thor did no harm. The giant woke, this time wondering whether a falling leaf may have brushed his forehead. Thor tried again, with all of his might, and this time, the giant woke, only to wonder if some birds had landed upon him. The so-called mighty Thor could do no harm to this foe. He also tried, tried, and tried to open the giant's massive sack. Thor wanted to get his supplies back. However, this feat was something that his strength could not do. Thor resigned to his powerlessness against the giant and gave up. The next day, Thor, Loki, the giant, and the children all came upon the towering castle of Utgard Loki. This was the home of a mystic and was where the giant bid them farewell. Utgard Loki appeared almost immediately afterward and began laughing at his unwanted guests. He could not believe how small they were. Utgard Loki said if they wished to rest in his abode, that they must prove themselves in a contest. Thor and Loki agreed. First up was Loki. His challenge was to defeat a fire giant named Logi in a meat-eating contest. Loki devoured all of the meat but left the bones, an impressive feat. However, Logi simply picked up the trough and devoured absolutely everything. 
Loki was beaten. Next, the boy Thialfi came forward and offered to compete in a race. Utgard Loki conjured forth a being named Hugi, and the two raced three times, and in each instance, Hugi was the victor. The contest was not going in Thor's favor, not at all spectators of myth. So the God of Thunder stepped forth and was challenged to empty Utgard Loki's drinking horn. Yet despite several attempts, this was something he could not do. Next, he was told to lift the giant's pet cat, but only managed to raise one of its paws. Thor could not believe how badly he was losing, so the God of Thunder said no one could beat him in a wrestling match. Utgard Loki nominated his elderly nurse Ellie for this final contest. Thor was smug. This was an old lady. What damage could she possibly do to a son of Odin? Well, put simply, spectators of myth, she gave the God of Thunder a whooping he'd never ever forget. Thor could not best Ellie and soon lost his bout with her. Utgard Loki was laughing his head off at all that was going on. For you see, he had been playing a trick on his unwanted guests the entire time that they'd been in Jotunheim. He told Thor that he was the snoring giant and used magic to cast an illusion whenever Thor hit him with Mjolnir. It is said Thor had actually carved mountains and complete valleys with each strike. But that was not all. He also revealed that the reason Thor could not open the bag was that because it was sealed in unbreakable iron bonds. Utgard Loki further explained that the being Thialfi that they had raced was actually the personification of thought, something no one is faster than. Next, he explained that Loki, the being that out a Loki, was the essence of wildfire, and despite Loki's best attempts, no one can outconsume a wildfire. He also revealed that the horn Thor was drinking from contained the ocean, and that no matter how much anyone tried, no one can drink the entirety of the ocean. Next, the giant mystic revealed that the cat Thor tried lifting was in fact the Midgard serpent Jormungandr. No one, not even Odin himself, can lift that beast. But what of the old lady? Well, as it turned out, spectators of myth, she was the embodiment of old age, and old age beats everybody, including Thor. Absolutely mad, Thor raised his hammer. He couldn't believe the humiliation he had faced at the hands of this giant. He went to attack Utgard Loki, but in an instant, he and his castle were gone, leaving behind nothing. Thor was beaten, made a fool of, and shown to be nothing more than a weak and mighty tool.